everybody loves the playoff finals. These two have played 90 games of the regular season, four semi-final ties, 159 goals, three managers, and a goal glut laden first half of the season, and a slightly tighter second half of the campaign, but it all comes down to this. The next 90 minutes will decide whether Wickham bounce straight back to the championship under the expert, if not slightly quirky, stewardship of Gareth Ainsworth, or whether Sunderland will end their four-year stay in the third tier. Sunderland are the favourites, unbeaten in 15 matches, and backed by what feels like the entire city of Sunderland. I don't know what's happening on Weir side this weekend, but you get the feeling there won't be anyone there to witness it. Last night at the Stadium of Light, Stars of the West End performed an evening of Queen songs at Wembley, the scene of Freddie Mercury's greatest ever performance, Sunderland have one vision, a return to the championship. The problem is, Mickey Gray, their trips to Wembley hardly ever end with the strains of We Are The Champions. Yeah, not very often, Sam, do they? Um, but this is a different group of players, it's a different manager. They have to concentrate on what's in front of them. It's a huge occasion. Everybody knows what's at stake. Four years in League One is just too much for a club like Sunderland. But you have to earn the right. You've got to go out there. You've got to perform to the best of your ability. And you have to earn the right to get yourself into the championship. As do the Wiccan players. They'll know what exactly what it's all about. They've been in the championship not so long ago. Their supporters have come here with expectation. I'm very optimistic. I know it's going to be a really difficult 90 minutes. But what a game. What a game to be involved in. Well, prior to the start here, representatives of both teams, mascots, captains, and all three officials, including Simon Hooper, who is the referee, stand abreast the halfway line with a Ukrainian flag with the word peace emblazoned through the middle in a moment of solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Let me run through the two teams before we start then. Sunderland with Patterson in goal, Gooch, Wright, Bart and Serkin as the back four. Luko Nine and Evans in the centre of midfield with Roberts, Pritchard and Embleton behind Stewart in attack. For Wickham Wanderers in those light blue and navy blue hard shirts, navy blue shorts, it's stopped down in goal. McCarthy, Stewart, Tapazzoli and Jacobson. Gate, Scowan in midfield. McCleary, Horgan and Obita behind Sam Vokes, who once scored in a European Championship quarter-final for Wales. He's up front for them. Tomorrow is the final day of the Premier League season. It's covered completely on Talk Sport. The title is up for grabs. Relegation issues will be sorted. The top four places will be locked in. And West Ham might send United into the conference. But who will be the first team promoted through the playoffs this season? You'll find out only here, live and exclusive to Talk Sport. It's the League One playoff final. And on the first blast of Simon Hooper's whistle, all the players and officials take the knee in Wickham shirts as they ask for racial equality and social justice. The Sunderland players stand. And then we are off and underway. With Sunderland in their familiar red and white stripes and black shorts attacking the goal away to our left. And the blue of Wickham Wanderers attacking the stand that the Sunderland fans are in at the other end. And Mickey Gray, you said to me earlier on, not that you're superstitious in any way, shape or form, that the Sunderland fans being in a different end today makes a huge difference. Well, every other time we've been to where we are doing the commentary today, they've always been to the left-hand side. Uh, I don't know if it means anything, but I'm just hanging on to it, any little it, thing it, that, that I possibly can. I can, can. tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, but they're certainly making one hell of a noise, that is for sure. The ball has been thrown down the left-hand side for Wickham Wanderers. It's helped away by Embleton towards the halfway line. Jacobson returns it towards Obita. Obita is penalised by our referee today. He's not the only man in charge, by the way. Uh, because although he is the main arbiter, we do, for the first time in the playoffs, have VAR. And Lee Mason, the professional VAR referee, is uh, in charge back at Stockley Park. Well, I don't know if I'm a big fan of it, Sam, if I'm completely honest with you. I think if you're not used to VAR on a weekly basis, um, do you start to change your game? Does your mindset think differently? If you're in your own 18-yard area, about holding on to a centre-forward or maybe getting a little bit of a better of them. 
So I don't know, we're going to have to see how that pans out and how it works today, but um, we've got it and we have to deal with it. Evans has just pushed the ball forward, Pritchard is taking it midway inside the Wickham half, trundles to the left, gets to the touchline and tries to play it down the touchline towards Dennis Serkin who takes a quick throw level with the edge of the Wickham penalty area. Infield it goes to Embleton who hands it off to Evans once again and Sunderland in possession in the early stages of this game. Just under two minutes played. Nil-nil in the playoff final. Here's Serkin cutting in, trying to get past the defender into the penalty area. Plays the ball towards the edge of the box and there was a foul on Dennis Serkin just as he tried to enter the penalty area right on the very edge he was being tracked by McCarthy all the way from right back into the centre and in the end the referee decided that that had gone on too long with a bit too much physical attention from McCarthy yeah, it certainly did fantastic play from Serkin from that left back position just worked it tried to play the ball inside he shoved to the ground it's a, big, a really positive start for Sunderland and this gives them an absolutely fantastic opportunity to get the first strike on goal in this League One Cup final. I think I saw uh, Aidan McGeady once score at Wembley for Sunderland in a uh, Papa John's Trophy final against Portsmouth from this sort of range. He's only on the bench today but the ball has been placed down five yards, four yards outside the penalty area, left of centre by Pritchard. And he's not the only one that's standing over it, Embleton is there as well, there's a four-man Wickham wall, it's about a 60 degree angle to the goal, and it's Pritchard who takes it right footed, in towards oh. the corner and hits the side netting, and the Sunderland fans on the far side thought that was in, it isn't, and they're bouncing around like they've just scored, they haven't, it's still nil-nil, and they weren't the only one were they? <laughs> Sorry Sam, I just seen the side netting bustle a little bit, I have to apologise there. Those on the far side have got an excuse, you haven't, it's right there. Wow, what a great opportunity, I mean, for all, Pritchard's done everything. The most difficult part is getting the whip and down and dipped underneath the crossbar, he done everything. It was just a direction, it was just a little bit wide of the goal, but a positive start from Sunderland, calming their nerves as quick as they possibly can. Adrian, are you sure this was a good idea? <laughs> Nil nil. We play nearly four minutes. You're listening to Talk Sport. Ball played out to McCleary on the right side for Wickham Wanderers. Poked forward by Scowan, who was once a Sunderland player. The ball was eventually cleared by Danny Barr up to the halfway line. And here comes Sunderland again, breaking down the right hand side, skipping away from one challenge was Patrick Roberts. He's got to aim at in the centre Ross Stewart who peels away towards the edge of the six yard box Roberts keeps hold of it then sends it back to Gooch Lyndon Gooch who scored the winner in the Papa John's trophy here with no crowd last year into Roberts who's trying to slalom his way in between a packed Wickham defence it comes out to Pritchard he's hit towards his own goal by the defender and Stewart can't quite reach as it. it bounces through the six yard box in a very dangerous situation and that's another big chance for Sunderland and when we were all talking earlier on today one of the things I mentioned was is that, that they don't concede many goals Wickham Wanderers Sunderland have stopped scoring loads of goals when they get chances today they're going to have to take them well that's two real great opportunities early on in the game for Sunderland I mean it's fallen to the perfect man in Ross Stewart just that little deflection there from Topazoli and he just gets to the back stick there Ross Stewart he's just got to try and poke out his left foot a little bit reacts maybe a little bit too slow He's maybe got one eye on the post. You talk about getting your, your players in the final third on the ball and show them what they're all about. Well, absolutely fantastic. Great start to the game for Sunderland. Yeah, the uh, Loch Ness Drogba, as he has called, has 25 goals this season. Ross Stewart was promoted to the Scottish Premier League with Ross County not so long ago. He is incredibly tall. And and the, the other nickname that Adrian was telling me about earlier was the uh, Caledonian Crouch. I can see that as well because he is so tall. A little bit thicker set than Pe Peter Crouch, but not much. Sunderland have started really well. Over on the far side, they progress down the touchline. It's put out of play by uh, Obita. It goes out for a throw-in. And Gooch will try and toss this in. Roberts trying to get away from Jacobson. It's into Pritchard, who's gone over to occupy the defence. He clips it over the top into the right channel, but there's no way that Roberts is going to get on the end of that. Now comes David Scott now and collects it to the left side of the area. Wickham aren't the most progressive side in the league, but they will utilise what they've got. And they will get a bit of stick in certain quarters for their rudimentary tactics. But they do keep it tight. And someone who started the season with a lot of goals in them 
have just slowed on that front. Ball has been cleared upfield by Stockdown. Taken down well by Scowan, who switches the play from left to right. Now it's collected by Jason McCarthy on the right edge of the Sunderland penalty area. McCleary with a dangerous cross into the box, and it was aimed towards Sam Vokes. And that was a good take by the young goalkeeper, Anthony Patterson, who came out very calmly and collected in front of Vokes. Best move from Wickham in the game. Looked a lot more composed, working the ball from left to the right-hand side. It's a lovely ball into the area. And that's where they're going to be a danger. There's such an aerial threat that they have, and they get bodies into the box, and they make it so difficult for you just to clear your lines, and the quality in that final third is very good when they do get there. Might have been a handball there against Tapazoli, but they've played on. The referee playing the advantage, and Pritchard has gone sprinting down into the right corner of the field. He's delivered a cross into the box, and there's no one there to attack it in Sunderland, red and white, and it's smuggled out for a throwing down by the Cole, a flag away to our left with Sunderland on the attack again. Seven minutes played, you're listening to Talk Sport. It's the League One playoff final at Wembley. It's nil-nil between Sunderland and Wickham, fifth and sixth in the division at the end of the season, looking for the right to join the likes of Rotherham and Wigan in the Championship next campaign. Here is Dennis Serkin, wide on the left-hand side into the feet of Roberts again, his trickery tries to open up the defence and he gets the decent ball into the box, it comes to Serkin, couldn't sort his feet out and a really important challenge that in, mid in the uh, middle of the penalty area by Stewart as the ball comes back in again and this time the cross is not at all good and it goes right over the top of the crossbar but that was a brilliant challenge from Anthony Stewart he's been a key component of Wickham for seven years and he had to get involved there as the ball broke inside the box to Serkin who couldn't quite sort his feet out. And it was a tackle that Anthony Stewart had to make. Brilliant play again from Patrick Roberts. A lovely little give and go. Himself and Pritchard have started the game very, very lively. And it looks like Roberts has got that license just to drift off that right-hand side. He's, he's got the ability with that wonderful left foot and that low sense of gravity. And he doesn't mind those 1v1 situations. Scottish Cup final today, and it's Rangers nil, Hearts nil, and they've played just over uh, seven and a half minutes in that game as well, so it's nil nil, and it might have been a tiring uh, week for Rangers, getting to and from southern Spain, and I uh, think the weather's just a little bit different uh, today at Hamden Park, that's for sure. Uh, it was really sunny earlier on, it's certainly very warm out there on the playing surface down in front of us, but it's not as sunny now, the clouds have come over here at Wembley. Still nil-nil, Sunderland have the ball in the right fullback position, it's hoiked high in the air, headed forward and away by Tapazoli, and then Sunderland regather possession over on the far side with Ross Stewart, who clips it over the halfway line, and then it's all the way back to Anthony Stewart at the heart of the... Wickham defence, he tries to send McCleary away, can't quite control it, and it goes out of play and away for a throw in. I haven't counted them, but there looks to be around about 45 to 50,000 Sunderland supporters in here. The official allocation, 46,460. And the effect is, both audibly and visually, that they have bullied Wickham just a little bit into one corner, away to our left-hand side certainly think that Wickham have, uh, have, have tried to bring as many as possible here their number is about 28,000 and maybe more than many people expected but Gareth Ainsworth would have played up to that in the build-up to this game he likes to portray his team as the underdog here's Embleton in towards the near post with a cross which Stockdale actually made a bit of a fist of really I don't think he needed to tip that over the top of the crossbar he did he probably could have just caught it rather simply, but he's given away the first corner of the game. Yeah, there wasn't too much pressure on David Stockdale there. I mean, whether he had to shout to clear it from one of his defenders, but again, it's good play over on this left-hand side. Sunderland, whenever they get the opportunity, it's half a yard. They're putting the ball into the area, and so far the quality's been very good when they put it in it. No, when they played against Sheffield Wednesday in that second leg, they had to battle for the first 10 or 15 minutes, and pretty much for the rest of the game, this has been a lot more settled and a lot more composed. Uh, Bailey Wright towards the near post, Bart trying to make some space at the back edge of the penalty area, it's aimed towards him, it's flicked into the air by Serkin actually, who took it out of the area, comes back to the left hand side, where it's collected by Corey Evans, who's a decent crossing towards the edge of the six yard box, and challenging for that was Danny Bart, didn't quite make enough contact on it, it's smuggled behind in the way for a goal kick away to our left. We played 11 minutes on Talksport, and it's Sunderland nil, Wetcombe Wanderers nil at Wembley. The start's goal, apart from scoring a goal, I think it's been the perfect run from a Sunderland's perspective. Playing in Wickham's half, they've been very positive in the final third. 
They expected a little bit more from Wickham. But you can see what they're trying to do when they do play out from the back. They're trying to get the ball into wide areas with that big long diagonal across to Gareth McCleary. And Jordan Abita over on that left-hand side. They've had a couple of half chances to put that ball in the area. But when those chances do come, they have to make them count. And Sunderland have never won a playoff final. But here they come, Embleton leading the charge again, getting towards 20 yards oh! towards goal. Striking it brilliantly down the middle past Scott Gowanin. What a goal that was from Hamilton. What a Wembley moment. And Sunderland take just one step towards promotion with a massive hit from distance. What a fantastic strike. The Sunderland fans go crazy. And well they might. It's a goal worthy of any Wembley final. Hamilton, the only change, the biggest call from Alex Neil makes the difference early on. It's Sunderland one, Wickham nil. Wow, what a start to the game, and what a finish from Elliot Hamilton. Brought back into the start eleven, absolutely fantastic. When he gets himself into a position there, onto his right foot, he's got one thought in his mind. And that is just a ball at that ball into the back of the net. It's an incredible finish. And what to start to the game for well, Sunderland Football Club. Well, he hit it with real power. Brilliant power. An amazing amount of venom. But David Stockdale is an electrician. And he might need rewiring after that. Because he got that wrong, didn't he? He went to move towards the ball with his left hand. And it sprung off off his arm and beyond him and into the net. I think when he sees that again, he'll be incredibly disappointed, Mickey Gray. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think on an occasion like this, you have to try and pick up the movement of the ball as quick as you possibly can. It's obviously swerved a little bit, which has put Stockdale off. But you can't take anything away from that strike, Sam. You know, even to take that on from that position. He had runners ahead of him with Ross Stewart. But no, he had one thought process. Keep your head down, get your laces through it. And it was an outstanding strike. Now, Wickham Wanderers have got to recover their faculties now. They are a team that like to dig in. They are a team that know that they have to fight and scrap for everything. And they're certainly going to have to try and find a way of scrapping their way back into this game. This is the guy, by the way, the goalkeeper who has a share of the Golden Glove in League One this season. 18 clean sheets over the course of the campaign. But it wasn't as easy as people will make out because of the way the ball dipped and moved in the air. But I think he should have saved it. Let's find out what Joe Shannon thought. Joe. The goalkeeper should do better, Sam. It's a terrific strike, though, isn't it? And the sheer noise from the Sunderland supporters, 44,000 when that went in. I haven't ever heard a Wembley roar quite like it. Gareth Ainsworth in lots of conversation with his assistant, Richard Dobson, down on the touchline at the moment. Alex Neal, the Sunderland boss, cool, calm and collected. Wickham not winning any of the second balls. Sunderland comfortably the better side. They deserve their lead. Yeah, they started much brighter, haven't they? Sunderland lead by goal to nil 15 minutes gone you're listening to talk sport and it's a red hue away to our right and maybe a red face away to our left hand side because David Stockdale when he sees that back I think will be mightily disappointed although as we say it was a terrific strike 1-0 Sunderland lead live on talk sport and a great start Nicky well Sam I'm just looking at Wickham and I think they've got to try and turn this game into a battle. For me, I think they're trying to play through the lines a little bit too much. Well, it doesn't suit them. It's not the way they play. It's like they're trying to match Sunderland at what they're better at. And that's why Sunderland are just certainly on top in the game. Pritchard, down the right, wins the ball again. Gets to the angle of the penalty area. Producer crosses the mid post and Anthony Stewart gets in front of Ross Stewart and flicks the ball away to safety momentarily. It's coming back again. It's been all Sunderland in the opening exchanges here. 16 gone. Here is Corey Evans. Has he fouled there? No, well, it looked like it. The referee says no. And Dominic Gate gets away with maybe a reckless challenge. Goes all the way through to the goalkeeper and Wickham will try to build now. Gareth Ainsworth would have delivered his special playoff rousing speech just before the players went out. But I wonder how they're feeling now, having conceded that early goal. 
Ball is up towards the midpoint of the Sunderland half. Out wide it comes. Gate with a cross into the box. It's missed by two Sunderland players. And Danny Bart had to stretch out one of those huge right limbs and poke it away to safety. It's collected on the near touchline by McCarthy and then sent infield to Horgan, who runs up towards the edge of the D. Lays it off to Vokes and then it goes wide again to Jacobson. Jacobson into Obita. And now in the midpoint of the Sunderland half, Scowan swings it right side towards McCarthy. It's brought down by Gape and back to McCarthy on the inch of the touchline, moving up towards the edge of the penalty area. Still they come Wickham. Sunderland back in shape and defending well and plugging the gaps, but now they've found one and just cracked one open and sent it round the corner. And McCarthy with a cross in towards the near post. It was aimed towards Vokes. It was just a little bit ahead of him. And it's passed by Anthony Patterson and cleared away by Sunderland but it was a good move that by uh, Wickham Wanderers yeah without a doubt you can see exactly what's going to work for Wickham they're trying to get this ball over to the right hand side this time with McCarthy McCleary the little give and go defenders Sunderland defenders just switching off but that's been a good ploy for them and now starting to grow into the game a little bit Wickham it was as if the first 10 or 15 minutes just bypassed them a little bit well they are happy to not have the ball Wickham Wanderers and ultimately this will force them to come out and play won't it because being a goal down in the playoff final you can't sit back and hope that you're going to nick a goal here or there yeah so, I mean the game plan Sam you're probably thinking from you know, Gareth Ainsworth's perspective is let's try and get in the lead and if we can do then we know Sunderland are going to have to take the game to us which will then leave gaps it hasn't worked out that way so that you know you go to plan b and that plan b at the moment is get the ball forward as quick as they possibly can and just try and create a few opportunities for yourselves patrick roberts almost managed to gallop into opposition territory but he uh, lost focus and lost the ball and it was then given away to dominic gabe who was found by pritchard and the free kick eventually belatedly maybe was given for wickham wanderers and gareth ainsworth is making that point i saw a photo nigel adderley uh, one of our commentators sent me a picture of him playing at Wembley for Preston very early in his career and he looks very youthful in the photograph he, he's aged a little bit as uh, Gareth Ainsworth and he's gone for a very different look now but he has been around for a very long time and not just as the Wickham Wanderers manager he's been a big part of the EFL, the Football League over the course of the last probably 30 years really he is one of its stars it's very different to a lot of the other managers in the league. Here is Jacobson in towards the edge of the penalty area. Ooh, the chest down by Tabazzoli didn't go right at all. And they break away now over on the far side, Sunderland, with Roberts fed by Embleton, who scored the only goal of the game. Up towards the angle of the penalty area, diagonally running towards it now. He skates past one challenge, then tries to lay it off to Pritchard. His ball in wasn't great. McCarthy pinches it and clears to the halfway line. Still 1 0 Sunderland. Yeah, I, I love what Patrick Roberts has done in the game so far, but I think that on certain occasions he gets himself in a really good position in a 1v1 over on that right hand side. He's got to try and show his pace. He's always trying to work it onto his left foot, and I think he's just got to keep the fullback guessing at times Jacobson over on that left hand side oh, good pinch by Jacobson up to the halfway line he goes and switches the play to the right but a space for McCleary now to bound towards the Sunderland penalty area first touch wasn't great cuts inside now needs a bit of support produces a cross towards votes who gets a header in towards goal but he pushed the defender in the back before he'd done so and it's going to be a free kick inside the penalty area for Sunderland who lead by a goal to nil live on TalkSport elsewhere in the Scottish Cup final it's still Rangers nil Hearts nil Rangers doing all the attacking so far a bit like here where Sunderland have been the dominant force and they've got their reward with Elliot Embleton's ninth goal of the season it's his fifth goal in ten games he's really come to the party at the end of the season yeah super player it's very difficult for Alex Neal to play all the four players that he has at his disposal he has to kind of rotate as much as he possibly can Elliot Embleton, he missed a few games at the end of the season, but he's got his opportunity at Wembley, and what a way to put your name up in lights well, after 11, 12 minutes. I mean, it's just a, it's a wonder strike, one you dream of the day before you actually play. Well, he, he doesn't mind the wonder strike. Did you see the goal that he scored, which was like a short hockey corner, straight in from uh, in the game against Cambridge, when he hooked it in from a yeah. very tight angle? <laughs> I think you meant that one <laughs> he's claiming it <laughs> ball played reverse brilliant by Roberts down the right side and then sent by Gooch to the edge of the box it's collected by Ross Stewart sent back out to Gooch again 
Sunderland on the attack, Roberts joining after that brilliant ball which set this move going on to Pritchard edge of the D right for his strike in towards the body of the goalkeeper this time he holds it and then falls on the ball and will clear away Sunderland one wick and nil well he's getting closer Alex Pritchard again a nice move from Sunderland over on that right hand side Roberts involved again Pritchard just a little half a yard away from his marker doesn't really get enough pace on the strike to threaten David Stockdale in that wick and goal he says the pace of the game's gone out a little bit now, Sam. It was so frantic at the beginning of the football match. There was no time to breathe. And now you can see the Sunday players are starting to slow things down a little bit, as are Wickham, but now they're starting to play the game they expected from them, from back to front, getting Sam Volks involved in the game a lot more. Well, because of their playoff record, you might think that some of the Sunderland fans would have stayed at home today, but uh, some have bought plane tickets to London via Menorca just to be here because it's cheaper than the train and if you haven't seen the picture that made Trafalgar Square look like a scene from the French Revolution last night then you should check it out on social media they are certainly now making Wembley their home throw into Sunderland over on the far side Sunderland Lee Wickham by goal to nil it's clipped down the right touchline Roberts takes it feeds the Right full-back, Lyndon Gooch, the American, who has scored here on Wembley Turf before. Back to the halfway line, where it's Danny Bart, who finds Bailey Wright, and then Sunderland look to build. In those red and white striped jerseys. I must admit, I'm not a big fan of the Sunderland kit this year. Usually a classic kit. This year, they've tried to be a little bit funky. And the stripes, as they get towards the top of the chest, fade into nothing so it just fades to white and they disappear right at the top of the jersey it looks like someone hasn't bothered to finish it ball switched out from the middle of the park by Imbleton towards the left and Sirkin Sirkin who signed from Tottenham is trying to get beyond Gareth McCleary who I thought for a moment he'd managed to shrug off but then McCleary came back at him and they bring the ball up towards the halfway line wicket with Scowan through the centre circle wide to the left and it's collected by Obita Obita runs up against Gooch goes tight to the touchline moves towards the penalty area goes through Gooch and gets to the box but he's being backed up well by Corey Evans who plays it against the forward and it goes out for a Sunderland throw that was good defending yeah well well played Corey Evans because in a 1v1 situation there you can see a beater he's got the beating of Lyndon Gooch just a little nutmeg he got the other side of him you need more from Patrick Roberts great in the final third but you have to help your fullback out in those 1v1 situations that's where you find yourself in trouble but fantastic play wing play from a beater Sunderland 1 Wickham nil. 24 minutes gone at Wembley in the EFL League 1 playoff final live on TalkSport with McDonald's Fun Football search McDonald's Fun Football to find out more some atmosphere uh, also by the way cheaper to buy a ticket to Barcelona, Madrid and Munich than it was for an anytime return for, to London on the train from Sunderland. We don't Sunderland. have passports in Sunderland, Sam. <laughs> well, the geezer who went to Menorca and to London did. He rode there. <laughs> Horgan sending it long and way out to the right. Taken down by McCarthy, the right fullback who's high up inside opposition territory. McCleary, who's been influential all season for Wickham sends the ball high towards the edge of the box and then it's too high and goes floating out for a goal kick away to our right hand side and it's back with Sunderland again and actually you know Gareth Ames has got to get something sorted here because they haven't settled into the game they haven't had enough quality when going forward and they look very much like a team that have had a real sucker punch in the opening few minutes of the game yeah it was kind of you know, welcome to Wembley Stadium for Wickham in that first 15 minutes I think they've actually got themselves into some good positions but it's the fullbacks McCarthy pretty much most of the time on this right hand side who's put the better balls into the area McCleary just skied one over the top of the crossbar a beater he's got the best of Lyndon Gooch on a couple of occasions but hasn't got past the second man but as a centre forward if you're Sam Volks that's when you start waving your arms around and saying you know am I going to get the service today or am I just a lone striker trying to hold the ball up for us to give the ball away and then Sunderland come back on the attack. 
Evans floats the ball forward, looking for Ross Stewart. It's away to Embleton, who's encouraged to shoot from 30 yards. Back to Stewart, edge of the box. He tries the curl one goal, which pushed away by Scott Bell. And it comes back out to the far side, the right. Now Roberts takes on the defender, gets to the byline, produces a cross, didn't get that right. Did brilliantly initially to get hold of the ball, take on Jacobson, get to the byline, but his final delivery was a little bit wild. And it goes into the afternoon sun and behind and away for a goal kick. Stockdown making a save there. I just wonder whether he made a little bit more than that than he needed to, diving towards his left. Maybe. I think he's done that on a couple of occasions, though, Sam. You, you remember the, the cross that came into the area, there was nobody around him, he could have plucked it out of the sky. This one from Ross Stewart, it, look, he's curling, it's going in the bottom left-hand corner, he has to make the save. But did he make a little bit too much of it? You know, could he just parry it down to himself and then picked it up on the second goal? Patrick Roberts, I have to give him another mention, Sam. I think he started the game so brightly. I mean, he was complaining to the referee a second ago that he got a little bit of a shove. I mean, his cross wasn't great with his right foot. But he's just got too much space and too much time over on that right-hand side, and it's something that we can have to sort out. Well, he needs a home, doesn't he, Patrick Roberts? He's, uh, it's never really worked out for him after moving from Fulham to Manchester City and going on loan absolutely everywhere. You know, he's at uh, Sunderland now will he be at some of the next season i'm sure he will hope to be if they're in the championship that is for sure and uh, he's the reason that Sunderland are here he scored the injury time goal at hillsborough in the second leg of the semi-final which sent sunderland to wembley and now they lead by goal to nil stewart up to pritchard who's been very good actually towards the end of the season as well Maybe he's himself a position in the team just behind the front man and he chested the ball down there and then maybe took a little heavy touch to take it out of play and away for a throw in yeah he has he's a carmel influence alec pritchard in that in that position that he has to take up again he's got that low center gravity he doesn't panic when players are around him and he picks normally the perfect pass and he's crafty he's cute he started his life at Tottenham but has spent time around the country at Norwich, Brentford, Huddersfield and others before landing here with Sunderland. And uh, he's 29 years of age now. He'll certainly want to ensure that he plays his part in a Wembley victory for Sunderland. But there's still a very long way to go in this game. And Wickham Wanderers are very good at staying in matches right to the very end. The ball sent long by Jacobson, cut out by Embleton, but only as far as Gape and Wickham have got it back. Midway inside Sunderland half, right by the touchline. The ball is played down by McCarthy, looking to try and feed Gape, who'd gone on a run, but it was blocked by Sirkin, and it's out for a throw-in. Into M McCleary, who tries to turn, despite being engaged by Embleton. And then it's up towards Gape, who's small of stature, but turns and does well to hold on to the ball a flick round the corner by McCleary might send a beater away doesn't quite get there because Danny Bart was watching the movement and nudges the ball out of play down by the corner flag away to our right hand side it's another Wickham throw it's definitely a ploy this right hand side for Wickham it's working for them whenever they can work the ball over to this side they get a lot of bodies in there two or three another ball into the area Hawkins delivery towards votes at the far post and votes scoops heads the ball goalwards but gets underneath it and it launches into the air rather than goes towards the goal and it's out for a goal kick away to our right hand side joe jacobson the wickham captain warned sunderland this week there might be a surprise with the way they play and certainly as the game has gone on they've got a little bit more on the ball Wickham Wanderers but it was Sunderland who gave them a surprise in the early stages of the game getting right up in their faces causing problems right from the very off and they lead by a goal to nil as a result of it well the ploy for Wickham is to get the ball into the box because Sam Boggs is just going to cause mayhem when that ball does go in the area just won a header himself there he was disappointed that he didn't hit the target and the more this game is going on Wickham are growing into it here is McCleary down the right side across which comes off the body of the retreating Luca 9 and it goes out for a throwing down by the corner flag 31 minutes on the clock and yeah Gareth Ainsworth getting very animated down in front of us but so is Alex Neal as well I don't think he was particularly happy about the fact that no one closed that situation down for Wickham and they've been allowed to progress down the touchline. Jason McCarthy to take the throw. 
Horgan wants it played into a bit of space on the edge of the box. They're taking their time over this throw. Adrian's got his stopwatch out to make sure that uh, it's less than a minute. It's thrown in towards McCleary and then uh, it's helped away by Sunderland. It wasn't really worth waiting for. Uh, Ross Stewart causing Anthony Stewart all sorts of problems. He wanted more help from Tapazzoli. Tapazzoli didn't give him it and he's being pressurised by Ross Stewart. who goes all the way back to the goalkeeper David Stockdale. Well, it's fantastic from Ross Stewart, the work ethic is different class, but you know, he needs help, you can't do that on your own, you've got Tapazzoli and Stewart just going to play it around at the back, Tapazzoli looks very comfortable on the ball, he, he actually takes his time when you think he's going to clear his lines, and then he, they eventually play back to the goalkeeper, but this, the centre forward, Ross Stewart, does not want to keep making those runs. Another ball by Horgan towards the far post, and Vokes comes and tries to get hold of it, but it's a brilliant take by Patterson. You know, when you're a goalkeeper, often we say, you've got to come out, take charge and clean everybody out. And he did. <laughs> yeah, even, even his own centre-half, Bailey Wright. He's just getting back to his feet now, but, you know, talk about inexperience in the build-up to this game. Well, that's on two or three occasions. Anthony Patterson's had to come and he's had to clutch that ball out of the sky. And he's done it absolutely brilliantly so far. And he's just got to take his time now, Sam. You know, certain parts of the game, as you said, you cannot dominate a game for 90 minutes when you can feel it's going against you just take your time like the wicked players have been doing with their throw-ins just ease your way back into the game well Patterson is 22 years of age he's listed at being six foot four I think he's bigger than that he is a giant isn't he it does help if you're a goalkeeper and you're absolutely massive and he certainly is ball played down the right then by Sunderland who looked to try and get on the attack Lyndon Gooch getting to a crossing position it's blocked over on the far side by Obita breaks for Roberts Roberts with another delicate ball into the feet of Pritchard who turns and tries to get it across oh. the face of goal was that a handball VAR might look at it we do have VAR today it is smuggled behind and it's out for a corner away to our left well I didn't see any of the Sunderland players appealing for it Sam but it was a difficult angle from where we are and when you see a player go to ground and the ball looked as if it maybe come around the shoulder area but again great play from Pritchard oh it's off his knee yeah I yeah. don't know who appealed for it but I, so, I certainly heard someone shout handball <laughs> <laughs> so I'm moving the mic away from <laughs> you, no, no. Oh, oh you're making an effort that's good <laughs> uh, corner kick over on the far side Pritchard is going to take it well there's a little bit of a delay because there's some sorting out to do and Simon Hooper is being spoken to by David Stockdale's not happy about something Sunderland one Wickham nil live on talks for at Wembley Mickey Gray a uh, playoff loser with Sunderland but very much part of that golden Premier League generation is alongside us in the commentary box here is the corner then for Sunderland who lead by a goal to nil a right hand in the air from Pritchard and then a curling out swinger towards the penalty spot headed back across the goal by uh, first Bart and then Bailey Wright launches one towards goal but it lands on the roof of the net and goes behind and away for a goal kick and it remains 1-0 to Sunderland just wonder if Bailey Wright had enough time in the thought process there maybe just to shuffle back a couple of steps chest that down and maybe get his laces through it he's not marked but it just rushes the header a little bit, he kind of loops it towards goal. The initial header back across goal is very good. But then as that ball comes to Bailey Wright, maybe being a centre-half, his thought process is just get this away from me as quick as I possibly can. Whereas maybe a centre-forward might have had that first touch and got the strike away. Pritchard trying to find Roberts and Roberts is dragged to the floor by Scowan and then a quick free kick is taken by Luke O'Nine and Ross Stewart is bounding into opposition territory he's being watched by Anthony Stewart but a good ball into Pritchard Pritchard lays it off Stewart's not going to get there for the second return and across comes Tapazzoli and tidies up for Wickham Wanderers who trail here by a goal to nil but Sunderland certainly look the most threatening out of the two teams in the game so far and they've got a deserved lead in the match Ball up to the halfway line, offside flag up against Gareth McClear, McCleary. And added by Akin Fenwar is having a chat, I think that's with Richard Dobson on the near touchline, just having a quick word with the assistant manager, giving his thoughts on what's happened so far. Joe Shannon is our touchline reporter today, observing that and observing Wickham Wanderers closely. 
Well, what, what, what do you think? We said, Sam, didn't we, that Akin Fenwer is one for pass, got instructions from the near side touchline. He likes to get involved. A lot of conversation between the Wickham coaching staff ongoing. He got a big cheer for the Wickham fans, Akin Fenwer, as he was warming up a, f a few minutes earlier as well. Yeah, and uh, I, yeah, I don't know what's going on in Wickham either today, but I imagine uh, that uh, there's not many people attending anything that is, because it's, it's quite busy from the Wickham end as well. Roberts into the penalty area, ball goes back to Jacobson, surely that's a penalty. Well, offside has gone up first of all. Jacobson looked as if he'd committed quite a dodgy challenge. He committed a horrible challenge on Connor Wickham in the playoff uh, semi-final. And that was certainly dicey on Patrick Roberts from behind. But I think the offside flag went up early. Yeah, it did, Sam. I could see it as the play was running through. You can see that the run from Ross Stewart's just gone a little bit too early. Clever play again. Jacobson, I mean, even still, you know, the flag went up very late. He's made contact with the ball. It would have been a penalty. But you don't make challenges like that in the 18-yard box. If he was onside, it would have been a penalty. Here is McCarthy delivering the ball to the far post. And outstretched arms of Patterson come out again. Jefferson into the air, pulling the ball into the slate grey goalkeeping uniform. And he will clear upfield. It remains 1-0 to Sunderland. And uh, they have threatened to extend their lead. They've certainly preserved it so far. That's not a great ball by Embleton, the goal scorer. McCleary forward, away by Embleton once more. Smuggled away on this near touch line. And Sirkin tries to win it. A bit of head tennis going on before it eventually comes from McCarthy to McCleary. But Pritchard doing his defensive work finds Corey Evans and suddenly have it back deep inside their own territory. Remember tomorrow, the final day of the Premier League season, we are covering the relegation battle and everything else that will unfold tomorrow. We've got Adrian's going to Manchester City straight after this. Well, they, uh, they've got the real medals, by the way, at Manchester City, I was told this week. And Liverpool have got a set of medals, but they aren't engraved, and they're going to use those medals for next season. So they've got to give them back should they win them tomorrow. But they're at Liverpool with a replica trophy. Adrian's with the real trophy and the real medals at Manchester City. Whoever lifts it at the end of the day, you'll find out here on TalkSport. And whoever stays in the Premier League, because on TalkSport 2, we've got live commentary of Burnley against Newcastle. And we have live commentary with Scott Minto and I tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. It's Brentford against Leeds. Are Leeds going to survive? We will be there. Make sure you're with us. Get the app. You can flip between the two stations. We will make sure you know absolutely everything you need to know tomorrow on TalkSport because it's not only relegation and title issues to be sorted out. Fourth place needs to be guaranteed for Tottenham away at Norwich. And there's a small matter of West Ham United trying to leap from Manchester United to get into the Europa League. So much to sort out and there's only one place to be. At the moment, sorting it out at Wembley, we haven't said that very often, Sunderland. Sam, you just said something in commentary there. It remains 1-0. And all the dominance and all the opportunities that Sunderland have made for themselves, yes, brilliant, they've got themselves in front. But it'll be a lot more comfortable, I'm sure every Sunderland supporter in this stadium will be a lot more comfortable if they got that second goal. Just to calm the nerves a little bit, because the more this game goes on, the energy will be sapping out the players. They put so much into it. Not just the Sunderland players, but the Wiccan players have done exactly the same thing themselves. You know, they've had their spells in the game, they've just not really had that clear-cut chance in the game so far themselves. Yeah, we, no we noticed that you might be a little bit more comfortable if they got a second goal. <laughs> <laughs> One goal to Sunderland. Here is uh, Stewart, midway inside opposition territory. Good ball into Luko 9, whose pass out to the left wasn't great. Cut out by uh, Scowan, who nudges it forward into the path of McCarthy. He likes to get forward on this right side. McCleary takes over now. Serkin goes towards him. McCleary, one of the really experienced ones. 35 years of age now. He's been a key player all season. Assists as well as goals that have been vital to Wickham's playoff charge. They snuck in on the final day with a victory at Burton and MK Don's win over Plymouth. Ball is out on the left with Obita, trying to get to the byline. Does get to the byline, he can't get the cross in though. He was under real pressure from Lyndon Gooch, who did very well actually in, uh, in that right fullback position. I'm Gareth Ainsworth right now. I'm saying to get the ball out wide to McCleary and to Obita. 
because that's where they're going to get the success because every time they get themselves into a 1v1 situation you can see Lyndon Gooch now he's just holding on to his knees looks like he's okay but he knows that beat has got the better of him in a 1v1 situation we've seen the ability from McCleary on this right hand side he loves to drift in I think their quality has just got to be better Sam in that final third they're relying on those full backs I like what I see on the right hand side McCarthy and McCleary loves getting over the halfway line McCarthy and they have to try and make that work in their favour 51% possession of the football for Sunderland, seven shots to Wickham's one, three shots on target to Wickham's none. It's 1-0. And the team from the northeast are at the moment showing their quality. Can they get out of the third tier for the first time in four years can they hold their nerve the longer the game goes on that's the collision between two central defenders and then a poor header back towards the middle of the park Sam Vokes with a challenge which was probably a little bit dicey inside the box but it was certainly a little bit dicier from the Sunderland defence just before that inviting pressure when they didn't really need to Mickey no, absolutely not you've got two centre halves going up for the same ball you know where's the communication it just takes a little shout for one of them to just clear the lines eventually falls over to that right hand side with Lyndon Gooch who's had a he's had a bit of a bad spell in the last four or five minutes he gets his header wrong or his clearance back towards his goalkeeper and that's what Sam Vokes is waiting for at half an inch an inch more he gets first contact on that ball and we know what's going to come it's been a really frenetic frantic occasion so far and so far I suppose an Alex there was a bit of an asset in the fact that he's kept the players calm they followed their instructions to the letter but they're going to have to deal with something in the second half from Wickham Wanderers if it stays like this because already you've seen the Wickham coaching staff plotting a way to change things here is Patrick Roberts jinking away from two challenges then trying to deliver the ball to Pritchard doesn't quite work and Pritchard's challenge on McCarthy was late as he attempted to clear from the right fullback position and uh, he will take his time over getting back to his feet but that was a lovely little moment from Patrick Roberts once again using his body just to jink in and out of challenges and open up the Wickham defence he's a, on his game today yeah he is he's been absolutely fantastic it was just his final ball on this occasion there's no doubt he's brought his A game I mean you, in tight situations like that you just wonder you know is he clever enough to get out of it two players surrounding him but brilliant skill great ability challenge by Luca Nine who was a Wickham favourite many years ago uh, ball headed towards the halfway line Ross Stewart is fighting for it doesn't quite get there and the ball is cleared by Wickham down the left side it goes out of play and away for a throw halfway inside Sunderland territory Obita tosses the ball into Horgan Horgan to Obita again Vokes to aim at in the centre can Obita get the cross in this time it's a lower one cleared away by Bailey Wright and then Scowan harassed by Stewart who's done brilliantly actually at the top end of the pitch for, for Sunderland increasingly looks a little bit isolated but he's certainly working and making sure that Wickham know that they can't slacken off at the back yeah, just giving a little foul away there centre forwards foul though Sam which gives Wickham an opportunity to put the ball into Sunderland's area he's such an honest player Ross Stewart he does like to help out defensively but I'd like to see him keep his energy for in that final third of the field and not making silly fouls and giving Wickham the opportunity to put the ball in the area like they're going to do now yeah it's definitely Ross Stewart and not Rod Stewart but he does wear it well free kick over on the far side Jacobson to take it left footed in towards the edge of the penalty area up there was Anthony Stewart whose header wasn't great and it goes behind and away for a goal kick but that was an opportunity and that is where there will be a threat I mean one of the big confidence things for for, for Sunderland is that they've kept eight clean sheets in the last 14 games yeah. so they, they've defensively tightened up it's something that Alex Neal prioritised uh, when he came into the football club but still Wickham are a real threat from that sort of zone yeah without a doubt you know you give them the opportunity like that a soft free kick as we would call it they're not going to let you down Wickham they are going to just put that ball into the area and you could see the desire from Anthony Stewart there trying to get away from his marker just to try and pinch that inch or two just to try and keep that below the crossbar but has to go down as a very good opportunity well the Sunderland crowd can be a huge positive but it could also weigh heavy on your shoulders Alex Neal talked about that when he walked through the door tried to forge better connections between the group of players and the supporters there won't be much better a connection than walking away with promotion from this occasion 
and they lead by a goal to nil with one minute of added time to be played at the end of the first half. Sunderland guilty there, just wasting a little bit of time and uh, referee Simon Hooper just pointed to his watch as Anthony Patterson took time over a goal kick. It's sent down the near touchline. Sirkin takes a throw into Wimbledon, the goal scorer, as we come to the conclusion of the first half at Wembley. It's poked forward by Pritchard. Luca Nides made a lovely run, couldn't control the ball as it came through from Pritchard. It was a delicious little ball by the Sunderland number 10. Half time in the Scottish Cup final. 0 0 between Rangers and Hearts, and half time here as well. But a positive scoreline for Sunderland. He scored six goals against Wickham in the regular season and they have won here as well today. At the end of the first half, more significantly, I suppose they have one foot in the championship thanks to Elliot Embleton's strike after just 12 minutes. Terrific hit. Goalkeeper will be red faced, but it's Sunderland 1, Wickham 0. Well, Wickham had to survive what can only be described as an onslaught in the semi-final at MK Dons, but they managed to get through it. Now they've got to come back after what can be described as a dominant first half performance from Sunderland and trying to make a fast start Gareth McCleary, McCleary tries to break away down the right hand side he's tucked back by Sirkin and a free kick is given and the first yellow card of the game is distributed to Dennis Sirkin and that was literally 15 seconds into the second 45 what are you expecting Mickey Gray? Well <laughs> not a start like that I mean Sirkin is a fullback and McCleary who's probably been one of Wickham's liveliest players the last thing you want is to pick up an, ele an early yellow card when for the rest of the game you know one more mistake and that's it you're walking down the tunnel but I expect similar from Sunderland you know they have to keep the tempo up like they did but certainly a lot more from Wickham Jacobson's going to take this free kick it's 18 yards outside the 18 yard box wide on the right left footed in towards the near post headed away by the first defender which was Gooch and then hooked further clear by Roberts it's tucked forward again by Jacobson but Luca Nine manages to get it clear over the halfway line and it's helped back towards the goalkeeper away to our right hand side and Sunderland have got their goalkeeper Patterson between the sticks Gooch right Bart and Sirkin at the back four Sirkin's just been booked O'Nine and Evans in the centre of midfield with Roberts Pritchard and Embleton behind Stewart in attack and then Sirkin has just gone in for a challenge over on the far side having been booked just seconds ago in fact he was booked exactly one minute ago and he has just gone wiring in over on the far side once again on uh, McCleary and the Wickham players are asking the question as to why he hasn't been booked again. Well, he's not going to get another opportunity, is he? He's not going to get another freebie. No, absolutely not, Sam. And that's what, exactly what I was speaking about. It was a silly ball away from Luke 09. Didn't just want to clear his lines. Sirkin then stretches out to try and win the ball back from McCleary. And we've got VAR here today. It wasn't sure a red was card, was it? It wasn't a red card. And now VAR can only give a red card, it can't give a yellow. But he is a very lucky boy that Simon Hooper didn't decide to start this second half with two yellow cards for Dennis Sirkin in 60 seconds. Free kick then over on the far side, seven or eight minutes back from the edge of the penalty area. It'll be a left footed delivery by Jacobson in towards the near post. Goalkeeper Patterson is there calmly once again, punches away. And then it goes back through the middle by Scowen. It's a fight ball and the header away by Bailey Wright is well won now there was an offside flag up over on the far side but Sunderland had numbers over going forward and a quick counter attack and they were prevented from utilising that quick counter attack by Simon Hooper's whistle yeah they certainly were I think there was two or three Wickham players who found themselves in an offside position from that free kick that just came back into the area and that's why you do want the play just to continue because you know, they had bodies forward there Sunderland but they haven't really got going yet in this second 45 minutes Gareth Ainsworth is the longest serving manager in English football he's coming up to his 10th anniversary as the Wickham boss he was backed by the Wickham board at the beginning of the season as they look to rebuild after relegation from the championship and they want to bounce straight back but they've got to come from behind if they're going to do that a little bit of miscommunication between Gooch and Roberts after a good move on this near touchline results in a throw in to Wickham deep inside their own territory they did have a bit of a wobble actually in February Wickham but they've been on a brilliant run until the end of the season Mickey it, you know, that saw them sneak into the playoffs they were unbeaten in the last 12 league games 
and along the way, I think they only conceded five goals in that period. And you can see why, you know, they've got that streak about them where you don't want to concede goals. <laughs> yes, OK, they find themselves a goal down here, a wonder strike from Mendelton, but they look organised, they've got that physicality about them, and they just do try and play in the opposition's half. And that's what you have to cope with on a weekly basis. And it all comes down to confidence, everybody knowing their job, and they certainly do in this Wickham setup. Scarlett gets it back to Anthony Stewart, who runs forward into a clutch of bodies and then plays a good intelligent ball down the right side for Jason McCarthy to chase. He gallops into opposition territory, a low ball into the near post, which is fended away by Bars. It comes back to Pritchard, who looks to tuck it out to the far touchline, but it's McCleary who brings it down. Now Jason McCarthy. And now Horgan with a chance to cross, and he does cross in towards the near post again. Bart with a header away, and then further cleared by Roberts up towards the halfway line. But Wickham have started the brighter in the second half. We've played nearly five minutes, and it's Sunderland 1, Wickham 0. But Wickham coming on strong. Jacobson back to the midpoint of his own half and Scowan. Square ball into Stewart with his braids tucked behind his head. And those braids pretty significant because... At one stage, during that wobble in February that I mentioned, Gareth Ainsworth, who's not the most conventional of fellas, said he would get braids if they made the playoffs. He settled for Platts. Ball cleared away up towards the halfway line, and Sunderland have hold of it now with Stewart, who doesn't quite make it stick, but it works its way to Pritchard left side. It goes back in field again, and then helped out wide towards the left touch line, and Embleton just didn't take the ball with him. Goes out of play, and it's a Sunderland throw. Well, Wickham have been excellent. As they come out in the second half, they're starting to play the game that they should have in the first 45 minutes. They're getting the ball forward. Sam Volks is involved in the game a lot more. The two wide players, certainly McCleary over on that right-hand side, which is now a big problem for Sunderland with Sirkin on that yellow card. He's made another foul since then, Sam. And I just wonder whether Alex Neal is, is probably having a little word in his own head. Do I need to make that change? Do I need to bring Clark or somebody else on and just change the system up a little bit? Because there is, there's going to be that onslaught from Wickham now. They're going to try and get the ball into the area because it is still 1-0. He's the only real recognised left back, isn't he, Dennis Serkin? Which is a problem. Here's Pritchard delivering a cross in towards the centre. And he's down by Stewart. It's narrowly wide with a right hand upright. He launched himself into the air to get on the end of a delicious cross from Pritchard. He headed it back across the face of goal. And it was narrowly wide of the upright. That could have been 2-0. What a ball. Absolutely fantastic ball in from Pritchard there. Just set itself up perfectly for somebody like Ross Stewart who just got above his marker. And he just needed to direct it into that bottom corner. And got his angles a little bit wrong, but that's the best move from Sunderland, certainly in the second half. Roberts surging forward. There was lots of open green grass for him to run into. He didn't quite get it right, and it's cleared and pinched and sent out to the far side by Wickham Wanderers in those blue shirts attacking the, the goal away to our left, where their supporters are housed behind, and they're trying to suck the ball towards that goal now. Out for a throw-in. Dominic Gape just goes over towards the far touchline to receive the throw. McCarthy delays it. And Wickham just wait for all the extra men to arrive on the edge of the box before taking this throw. 53 on the clock, live on Talk Sport. Remember tomorrow the final day of the season, and then the Nations League games, and then the UEFA Women's European Championships, all on this station throughout the summer. You won't miss a game. I don't think you've got much time to go on a summer holiday. And if you do, just take the Talk Sport app with you and you'll hear it all anyway. The ball is on the far side, the right. In towards McCleary. Oh, he overran that. It was too uh, loose with his touch and he stretched and Pritchard went down I don't actually think that Pritchard was too badly injured there but he's doing the old Thiago Silvers just using his experience just to delay to stop to break the game up a little bit and get Sunderland a little bit of respite yeah absolutely Sam that's what you have to try and do you've got to try and get a breather whenever you get the opportunity in this stadium it's a sapping football pitch this it's a huge pitch and Wickham about to make some replacements. Joe Shevin's on the touchline. Swing, who's about to take to the field. Aloni, tall, dynamic, 
central midfield player. Wickham looking for a little bit more physicality in the middle in the second half. They had grown into the game, but of course the second Sunderland goal, Sam, would surely make the game safe for them. Yeah, Lewis Wing about to come on, wearing number 11, stretching, towering above Gareth Ainsworth, who's just issuing final instructions. That change about to happen in the next few moments. Sunderland come forward again. Certainly Wickham has started the better, but here's Embleton, 25 yards out, trying to feed Stewart, always played it behind him. Just needed a little bit more of a delicate, more intelligent ball towards the edge of the box, and Stewart would have been in between the two centre-backs, and that would have been deadly. Here's Pritchard again, on the ball, turning it back towards the right, Lyndon Gooch moving down the touchline, finds Embleton, Embleton back to halfway, Sunderland in possession with Roberts, that's more intelligent from Sunderland, just keeping hold of the ball, not rushing things, and making sure that they retain possession. They have it again, and it's pumped forward by Embleton, and then Stewart's touch is too big, and he takes it wide towards the right, and out of play, and away for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. Embleton and Pritchard increasingly more influential as the second half gets towards its 55th minute and here is that change and Daryl Horgan comes off and he is replaced as Joe said by Lewis Wing yeah it's an early change well I think Gareth's probably had a look and maybe thought we need to change something up here we need some different ideas some different legs just to freshen things up a little bit Sunderland in the last couple of minutes has just started to play the ball into better areas in his second half on two occasions one in the first half I think it was Luke or nine his touch just got away from him and it was a similar situation with Ross Stewart on this occasion where he just stretched out his right leg and it went over the byline too much for him to do but Pritchard yet again he's the one who's dictating things he's getting on that half turn he's been able to play the ball forward now into better areas he said he never panics on the ball He's so calm first change of the game so far we play 56 minutes he's listening to the talk sport all tossed down the touchline the Wembley Sun now exclusively in the half that Sunderland are defending and it will be draining and it will have its effect on proceedings because I was down on the touchline prior to the start of the game and it's very warm today at Wembley Ball out wide with Gareth McCleary. Moving up towards the edge of the penalty area. He chops it onto his left foot. Produces a cross. It's over the head of a beater. Who can't scurry to keep it in. As he runs towards the perimeter of the penalty area. It just goes beyond him and goes out for a goal kick. Away to our left-hand side. I just get yeah, McCleary there again. You know, I'm sure his teammates and his managers passed on information. Just to say, get the ball over to that right-hand side. Sirkin cannot afford to make another bad challenge. Whether it's with his right or his left foot. From the McCleary, he just has to get that half a yard and hope for his side that Sirkin makes that bad challenge. Pritchard's header doesn't reach Roberts, comes back towards Vokes, who was in an offside position, so a free kick will be given to Sunderland, who did pick up four points against Wickham in League One this season. Those games under Lee Johnson, winning 3 1 in September, they drew 3 3 in January, but this game was always going to be tighter, so much more riding upon it so much more tension in the air as the game creeps towards its conclusion and so much at stake for both these two and so much that has been done over the course of the season to the teams to change the way that they have operated both have tightened up defensively stiffened up at the back towards the end of the campaign so it was never going to be or never expected to be a goal fest looks like something they're going to make a change in the not too distant future as well is that Jack Clark who's just gone down to get his jersey, has he? He's forgotten his jersey, so he's going to go to the dressing room and get it. And that might be the change that we were speaking about, Sam, with Sirkin. I know he's, he's predominantly right footed, but he might have to come back into that left back position if Alex Neal is thinking about Sirkin. Well, he's been playing wing back, hasn't he? Yes. Jack Clark. So it might be a change in system, you don't know if, the, if, the, if Alex Neal's maybe thinking that way. But the last thing they want to do is play the final, what? 30 minutes and maybe more than that with 10 men not in this heat right free kick Bailey right to take it short of the centre circle in the centre of his own half he smacks it down the right side looking for Stewart Jacobson gets there first and it's a poor header by Anthony Stewart which allows the ball to run to Patrick Roberts smuggled out by Obita away for a throw midway inside 
Wickham territory and Lyndon Gooch has got it once again a Wembley hero a year ago 59 on the clock here is Pritchard 1-0 to Sunderland on talk sport Gooch Roberts tight to the touchline felt he was being tugged by Obita referee didn't uh, blow his whistle and it goes all the way back to the goalkeeper and they start again Wickham with Stewart bounding forward Anthony Stewart looking for Gareth McCleary back out to Anthony Stewart again who looks long and tries to aim for Vokes oh. it's over the head of the defender Vokes has brought it down goalkeeper's come out brilliantly and made himself big after it was misjudged on the edge of the area by the Sunderland defence Bailey Wright getting caught by the bounce of the ball but he's been rescued by his goalkeeper Anthony Patterson who smothered the ball as it came towards him with Sam Vokes bearing down what a chance what a chance I mean as a defender what you're doing read the situation and the line of the ball and just clear your lines when that doesn't happen that is what Sam Vokes is waiting for a touch out of his feet he's just trying to play at either side of Anthony Patterson he doesn't really get connection with his first touch Sam Vokes and it just takes that opportunity away from him but I have to say a brilliant save in the end from Patterson now right, just a little bit wrong with his judge of the ball and it bounced just in front of him out of reach and then over his head here's the change then it's Elliot Embleton off and Jack Clark on looking at Anthony Patterson he looks like he could have been in that kids game earlier on today he's so youthful in the face isn't he we had a kids game on here 8 aside at about 1.30 this afternoon and the Portsmouth in the community team won against uh, Sheffield Wednesday by two goals to nil. And they're all under, I think they're under 11, something like that. Uh, I looked at Nathan Patterson's face and I was like, wow, he looks like he could have been on that team. Um, they've made the change then. Jack Clark is on and Embleton off, the goal scorer. The man whose goal at the moment could decide this Wembley playoff final. Ball clipped forward by Bailey Wright, wide towards the left. And then it's headed forward by Wright once again. No one chasing that in red and white is going to get there. But Jacobson nudges the ball away from his own goalkeeper and takes control of a situation which really Stockdale could have handled. And it's cleared away by Wickham to the halfway line. Nervy moments as the tension increases at Wembley. Always a nerve jangling affair, these playoff finals. And we've got all three of them live and exclusive to National Radio right here on Talk Sport. Gooch felt he was fouled, doesn't escape with the ball, gives it away. Tafazzoli looks up, hesitates, plays it short into midfield and wing. And then back to Scowan, who tries to dictate from the base of the midfield once more. Well, still like that for Sam. I don't know if you thought there was going to be a change. I thought there was going to be a change in system where I thought Jack Clark would maybe drift into that left wing back position and Circa would maybe tuck in a little bit as a centre half but it still looks like the four and Sunderland have got to try and get a grip of this game in the second 45 minutes they're not playing the football we saw in the first half it's not happened for them in that final third they're hanging on and it's Wickham who are finding it a lot more easier now to get the ball forward they're bringing Sam Volks involved in the game a lot more than he was in the first half and they've just got a little bit more time on the ball far be it uh, from me to add any more nerves to your system but uh, these things happen in threes apparently I was at the FA Cup final that went to extra time I was at the women's FA Cup final that went to extra time and here we are at Wembley again I've got a few more playoffs to do haven't you so <laughs> I don't have to come every single week <laughs> 63 minutes on the clock I'm just winding you up 1-0 to Sunderland, giving Wickham fans a little bit of hope. They haven't had too many shots on Anthony Patterson's goal, but they did have one from Sam Vokes, which is the closest they have come. He just didn't quite connect in the way that he would have hoped. The first touch just sort of a little bit too heavy, didn't position his body correctly. Patterson did, and it remains 1-0 to Sunderland. It was maybe a little bit more surprised than, than anybody on the football field that the ball actually fell to Sam, but well, with the quality that he's got and the goals that he scored this season, his first touch has to be better than that. Good touch by McCarthy, second touch wasn't as good, Serkin being simple gets the ball out over on the far side. More changes from Wickham in the offing in the next few moments. And it's going to be another change. But first of all a throw in on the far side, 64 on the clock. 
and it's going to be tossed in by McCarthy and he's wants to go long with this he's trying to encourage his teammates to uh, get into the box and now run towards him he's gone short to Gareth McCleary open the angle up for Stewart to deliver across towards Votes who heads it down drops towards wing inside the box he can't get on the end of it it's smuggled away by Sunderland who hack it towards halfway but it comes straight back again and there is a little bit more about Wickham in this second 45 and they are about to make another change Joe Shannon is watching from the touchline Handler about to take to the field a forward player formerly of Gillingham and he can play to the right or left of a three Sam but it's Jordan Abita who's leaving the field this might be a change of shape but can might go with two up top equally it looks like Handler is going to take the place of Abita and place the left of the three behind Sam Vokes by the way Sam after that Vokes missed chance Gareth Ainsworth hands to his mouth could not believe his number nine hadn't scored well, he has scored quite a few goals this season, 17 of them, and he didn't score in 30 league games with Stoke last season. I think their supporters and management team might be less surprised, but he's certainly had a cracking season at League One level, hasn't he? And he will feel as if he should have taken that opportunity presented by the misjudgment of Bailey Wright, allowing the ball to go over his head, and uh, he didn't. And Wickham is still behind. They've won the ball back though inside the centre circle. Steered out towards the right by Dominic Gate. And it's gone out and away for a throw. Sunderland just feeling as if they're weathering the storm here and coming through the tough part of the action. It's still Rangers nil, Hearts nil in the Scottish Cup final. And it is, uh, it's non-league finals day tomorrow, isn't it? And there's going to be two finals here tomorrow afternoon. The FA Vars final is at 12.15, Little Hampton. Town facing off against Newport Pagnall Town and the FA Trophy final at 4.15 Bromley take on uh, fellow National League side Wrexham I grew up not too far from Hayes Lane for my first ever football commentary at Bromley here is uh, Roberts running towards the edge of the box plays it left towards uh, Pritchard tries to poke it back into the feet of Roberts dispossessed and cleared away and then there's an offside play against Vokes who's getting a little bit more frustrated the longer the game goes on. He is. He's having to come a lot shorter now Sam and that's a big problem for, for him because he wants to be in that final third and as Sunderland just start to grow into the game again Patrick Roberts, they've got to get him on the ball he looks so lively in the game he's been absolutely fantastic but he can't get involved in the second half he's got a couple of touches now yeah, Jacobson's just gone wiring into him down the right-hand side. Roberts is testing him and he's asking for a foul he's not going to get. I understand the Jack Clark substitution now because what he's done, Alex Neal, is he's pushed Clark right over to the far side, the left. Yeah. And that is an area where McCleary and McCarthy have had so much joy. And they've just given something for Mc McCarthy to think about now. Yeah. They can't afford to leave Jack Clark loose over on that far touch line so it's a good tactical change that from Alex Neal you're completely right that was where they looked best in that first half with a full back running over the halfway line good ball in by Pritchard looking to find Roberts once again who feels he was manhandled once again by Jacobson who kicks it out of play and away for a throw in halfway inside the Wickham Wanderers half it might be that uh, Wickham are thinking of another change, Sunderland warming up substitutes away to our left-hand side. Pritchard just going down on his haunches. He's done that two or three times, Sam. Uh, uh, and I, I think he, he had a knock in the, in the other half. And uh, I'm just wondering if he's OK. I mean, the last thing that Alex Neal would want to do is probably take him off. But Roberts um, picking the ball up from Pritchard, driving towards the 18-yard box, holds on really well, gets the ball back inside the area, goes down. Should he get a penalty, they give a corner. Well, surrounding the referee, a red and white striped jersey is asking him to have a look at the monitor. The VAR will be checking it, no doubt about that. But Simon Hooper has waved away the protest. He's listened to his refereeing colleagues back at Stockley Park and says corner. There's no point in asking you what you think. No, You're going to say it's Sam, a I, did, I didn't think it was a penalty in the first half but there if you're running in between two defenders you've got to try and make contact with the ball he's done initially he's done brilliant but then he tries to go through a narrow, narrow gap of two players and I just think it's too tight I think it is the right decision here is the corner on the near side to be taken by Pritchard they in a tight bunch the Sunderland players and they've just spilt away it's delivered by Pritchard in towards the near post the header over the top of the crossbar is by Danny Park 
and it's out for a goal kick away to our right hand side I do think though you know that situation you've got two Wickham players going for the ball and one Sunderland player you've got to be very very careful and Anthony Stewart just lent rather heavily into Patrick Roberts and I just wonder whether or not if that had have been given as a penalty by the referee whether VAR would have overturned it I'm not sure they would have done well it was definitely worth asking the question and Sunderland players went round the referee they asked Simon Hooper if they could go to VAR good flick on by Ross Stewart Jack Clark is the profiteer down the left hand side moving into the box returns it to Stewart at the near post good delivery but there were three Wickham Wanderers bodies two defenders and the goalkeeper there to push it behind and away to safety it's another corner for Sunderland yeah fresh legs Jack Clark on that left hand side he's comfortable going either left or right hand side he just gets to the byline there kind of scuffs he cross a little bit into the ground he's got one player to aim for corner number four to the near post corner number four for Sunderland 1-0 the score in their favour at present looking for Ross Stewart on that occasion didn't quite manage to find him can they find him from this corner kick Pritchard to take it two hands in the air this time floats a deep one and Stewart has peeled off and he's got loads of time and space he tries to toss it back across the face of Gilbert plays it against Jacobson who initially had left him all alone they've given the uh, goal kick and that is the right decision because it didn't actually touch Jacobson it was just a poor lift ball headed forward by Luke and I and Sunderland come forward again and then a collision between McCarthy and Pritchard just a little bit niggly out there now gives a free kick to Wickham Wanderers and, and look all the while that Wickham Wanderers are in the game there is still a chance they don't mind the late goal themselves there's a lot of experience in that Wickham Wanderers team is the oldest average 11 in League One this season largely they've used the core nucleus of players just 24 across the season they know how to get jobs done ball sent forward up towards the 18-yard box that Wickham are attacking Clark tries to head it away Pritchard draws a foul uses his experience they've uh, learned a thing or two from uh, Wickham Wanderers I think Sunderland <laughs> as the game has gone on 72,342 uh, and look I must admit when I first came here today I wasn't expecting to say that actually 28,000 of them are from Wickham I was expecting a smaller number than that but there is still a sizable number of uh, a sizable majority of Sunderland fans inside this stadium and the atmosphere has been terrific Mickey oh absolutely and you just I'm thinking of the players now Sam the sun just keeps coming over the top of the stand doesn't it top of the roof and there's more Sunderland players in it than Wickham players and you're just wondering how much that is going to take out of them Stewart over on the far side into Clark Clark weaves his way to the edge of the box back to Clark from Pritchard who goes on the outside of McCarthy runs into Gape and Gape does well to nab it put it out of play and away for a throwing down by the corner player but he's a handful Clark when he's on his game yes definitely good play again good defending there from Gape looks as if he's got a problem there was a coming together he stayed on the ground here but they've certainly been a better side Wickham in the second half they've started to play the way I expected them to play and Gareth Ainsworth made those changes I don't think he's finished with those changes and here's an interesting thing I'm just wondering with the heat Sam and I'm not a fan of it but do the players actually get the opportunity to come across to the technical areas and actually get that drink is it after 20 minutes or something we didn't see it in the first half and I thought we might have actually seen it in the second half but um, there's only a, a certain individual players come across yeah well I saw that in the uh, Europa League final on uh, Wednesday night when Adrian was in Seville it was so necessary because of the heat to have a cooling break after the midpoint of both halves in that particular encounter and I'm not entirely sure whether that is the situation here they're just addressing an injury but it wouldn't be a bad idea to get some fluids on and Lyndon Gooch is just walking around to one or two of the other players in red and white and trying to encourage them the blue and white, uh, the blue and dark blue of uh, Wickham Wanderers are about to get an extra lift. 
and Joe Shannon can tell us all about it. Inevitable Adebayo Akinfenwa at the age of 40 is about to take to the field, Sam, from Hackney Marshes in the east end of the capital to playing beneath the Wembley Arch in the northwest of London to finish his career. He's retiring at the end of the season, retiring effectively once this game is done. And as I say, at the age of 40, Gareth Ainsworth hopes he can come on and score the goal that might give Wickham a leveller in this semi-final. Dominic Gape it is, who's coming off. 40 years of age, 61 goals in 249 appearances. When he signed, they were in League Two. 33 league appearances, one goal last season. Seven scored in his last 77 in all competitions. He scored in all three league starts this season. He is retiring in a roundabout at the moment, 16 minutes time. He won the 2020 League One playoff final here with Wickham. He scored a penalty for Wimbledon six years ago in the final. He is an EFL legend, a family man, a clothing label owner, an Instagram icon, a gym connoisseur, an entertainer and a thoroughly nice geezer. What an occasion for him. Absolutely fantastic. What a way to go out. Actually been given more time than I thought he might have done. But needs must. Wickham still have to get themselves back on level terms in this final. Well, he's been given 15 minutes because they need a goal. And over the course of his career, he's certainly known where the goal is and he's up there to bully the defence now and he's helped the ball on into the path of Hanlon who doesn't get a clean touch on it it's cleared away by the Sunderland defence and then it's blocked from reaching Ross Stewart by Tafazoli back to Akin Fenwa who tries to send it down the left he's already had two quick touches of the ball and now McCleary combines with Akin Fenwa and then Bart slides in and manages to rescue the situation for Sunderland and Sunderland at the moment in a situation where they don't have too many bodies upfield and they're defending very deep and they don't want to invite pressure late on in the game. 31 in the second half gone. Headed away by Sirkin. The ball clipped back by Scowan to central defender Anthony Stewart who just body swerves away from Ross Stewart and it's up towards Akin Fenwa who's bundling his way forward once again. This time it's cleared away by the right back Lyndon Gooch Patrick Roberts maybe they need a little bit of his calm and poise now as he drags them up the field and then plays a lovely little re reverse ball that Stewart chases into the channel didn't quite get there and it's all the way back to the goalkeeper it gives the ball away again Sam they cannot get hold of the ball at the moment so they've just got to try and keep calm and play some little five yard passes and control and compose themselves it's all Wickham now. And they've given the ball away again. And here comes Jacobson, moving towards the edge of the Sunderland penalty area. Peeling off to the far side is Vokes, who launches into the air. He couldn't reach it. And it goes out. And I think there would have been an offside flag up had he connected with it anyway. He didn't. And it is a free kick, yes. For Sunderland away to our left-hand side. Scottish Cup final. Rangers nil. Hearts nil. Alex Pritchard has gone into the book in the last few moments. I didn't see for exactly what. I'm going to guess time wasting. Uh, a foul in the far corner. Foul I think it must have been for some. Yeah. But Akin Fenwas came onto the field. He's had three or four touches of the ball already, and what he has done to Sunderland's backline is made them start to panic because they're now not thinking they're going to win the first header. Then the ball gets placed on the feet because they're so deep away from them. You've got runners either side of Akin Fenwa and they've got the pace and the quality to get behind. And that's where Sunderland have started to panic a little bit, started to grow and play into the way that Wickham want them to play, which is why they are now the better side. Ball goes up towards Vokes, who thinks he was fouled by Danny Bart. The howls of derision from the Wickham Wanderers players. Waved away by Simon Hooper, the referee. Ross Stewart tangling with Tafazzoli again. And the ball is cleared by Ryan Tafazzoli in his first playoff final towards the left of Brennan Hallam. Goes down that left, pokes it past two players, gets towards the edge of the box, shoots low. And he had options in the centre and decided to drive the ball forward and go for glory when really he should have laid that off. Back in Fenwell actually, but just slowed up on the edge of the penalty area and was in space. Oh, what a chance. He came on the field, Brennan Hanlon. And he's done everything right, he's got away from his marker, he's kept the ball in play. But the bit where he just needed to compose himself is the part that he got completely wrong. He's on the corner of the 18-yard box and he tries to curl it round. 
Anthony Patterson where he had three Wickham players on the edge of the 18-yard box just waiting for that ball pulled back. As Callum Doyle is about to come on for Sunderland in the next few moments. Here is Patrick Roberts. Now it's on to Pritchard. We're in the 79th minute of the game. Pritchard moving towards the edge of the area. Gets it to Stewart. Short onto his right foot. Shoots and scores! Brilliantly! Down low to the goalkeeper's right. David Stockdale couldn't move. And it's another huge goal for Ross Stewart. Driving the ball low and hard and into the net. And driving Sunderland back into the championship. The Loch Ness Drogba with a monster goal. Sunderland lead by two goals to nil with ten minutes left in the playoff final. Wembley makes superstars and this afternoon those stars are in stripes. Sunderland strikes. Sunderland two, Wickham nil. Mickey Gray, how are you feeling now, fella? <laughs> well, we don't do things by halves, do we? I mean, it's been on the back foot pretty much for the whole of the second half. And you wait for that one bit of quality. It comes from this right-hand side. Pritchard involved yet again. And well, 25 goal man. Now 26 goal man, Ross Stewart. Just keeps his patience. It's not been a brilliant performance from him in his second 45 minutes. But when you need a man on the spot just to slot that into the bottom corner, he was the man. What a superb finish. And listen to that. 46,000 Sunderland supporters. It is just incredible. What an atmosphere. I think that's his fifth goal against Wickham this season. Joe Shannon, I know you're not feeling great, but what are the substitutions? Well, Callum Doyle is about to come on, Sam. We're still waiting for confirmation of exactly who's going off. I think it's Pritchard who's just left the field. It is. Alex Neal dancing a jig, Sam, when that goal went in. He ran back. Big bear hug involving all his staff. He knows Sutherland are going back to the championship. Gareth Ainsworth looked on glumly. And Brandon Handler, who missed that chance just a few moments before, head in hands. Great, great moment for Ross Stewart, for Sunderland, the 45,000 who have taken over the capital. In fact, there's a lot more than that. 80,000, they think, have come down from the northeast. But can they survive the last 10 minutes now without any real scares? That's the big question as we go into the final section of this playoff final it's been a really good playoff final as well started brilliantly hectically frenetically started with a brilliant goal maybe it's been finished with a wonderful wonderful finish from Ross Stewart who's on the march again down towards the edge of the penalty area a right footed shot which he drags well wide this time didn't connect at all well with that and it goes behind and away for a goal kick Sunderland 2 Wickham nil. Sunderland on the verge of a return to the championship it took Nottingham Forest three years Leeds three years it's taken Sunderland four years Mickey Gray I've seen you so many times over that period and all you keep saying to me they just got to get out of that division yeah yeah and it's harder than people think you know when you're in that division it's very difficult for the players to get themselves spurred up to try and fight every single week to get out this League One because there's so many sides in there big clubs in League One now and it's here, come down to 90 minutes here is uh, Roberts meandering to the edge of the box for Sunderland once again into Stewart once more who's brushed off by Anthony Stewart again a few half-hearted cries for a penalty but they're not going to get those and it's cleared away straight upfield towards Akin Fenwar who brings it down brilliantly under pressure from uh, Bailey Wright spooned away by Luke and I and now Sirkin and some of those in blue look a little bit tired now feeling the heat and feeling the season because they know that it will be very unlikely that they can come back from this sort of range 2-0 Sunderland lead here is Jason McCarthy who's been one of their better players today Callum Doyle the substitute charges away Hanlon tries to get hold of it Brandon Hanlon and they thought for a second there that they were going to get a throw in Sunderland but it didn't go their way 
and it's out for a Wickham throw level with the edge of the penalty area seven minutes to go before celebrations on Weir side and it's all about hanging on now that all important second goal you can see it again deeper and deeper Sunderland well this ball is keep coming into that 18 yard box whenever we can get the chance they are not going to let you down and it's not over and it's never over until it's over and Sunderland know all about that I was here when they played Charlton in 2019 but Roberts has been sent away down the right hand side he moves towards the edge of the penalty area he's got support from Clark he gets into the box he drives it goalwards it's narrowly wide at the right hand upright well he cut in on his left foot after charging into an open half of the field really there wasn't too many back in Wickham Wanderers colours as he got to the edge of the box he decided to come in on his left foot and he angled a shot towards the fast stick it didn't quite reach it well, if a player deserved a goal this afternoon, it was Patrick Roberts. I mean, it's a brilliant ball down the line. And he must be digging so deep just to try and get any ounce of energy out of them that they possibly can. He does again the hard stuff. He gets it and works it onto his left foot. Just can't find the angle. Just to slot it into that bottom corner. 2-0 to Sunderland. Five minutes remaining. Headed down by Vokes as another long ball goes up in the Wembley sunshine. The lingering smoke from the red smoke canisters that were unleashed away to our right when the second goal went in, the defining goal, the moment in this playoff final when I think the Sunderland fans had really started to believe that it was true. Because if you're a Sunderland fan, you were never going to take for granted that 1-0 situation. The margin was too tight. Here's McCarthy for Wickham, into the box, away by Callum Doyle, out on the edge of the area to Scowan who shoots and it's deflected behind by Corey Evans who positioned himself brilliantly and it's out for a corner to Wickham Wanderers. There's still four and a half minutes to go. You're listening to Sunderland 2, Wickham nil in the AFL League 1 playoff final live on TalkSport with McDonald's Fun Football. Search McDonald's Fun Football to find out more. And this is where it's not going to be pretty. From a Sunderland perspective, all you have to do is just fight for your lives, keep clearing your lines. Wickham are just going to put so much pressure on to try and get themselves back into this game. Here's the corner delivered to right under the goalkeeper who's been brilliant as well. Punched away by Patterson, out towards the near side. Kept alive by Anthony Stewart. Lovely little turn past Luca Nine into the near post. And it's too close to that near post and it's an easy save by Anthony Patterson who started the season thinking that he was going to spend most of it in Notts County I think in non-league and will end it being the goalkeeper that helped return Sunderland to the championship well you talk about level heads and, and experience heads well he certainly hasn't got the experience but level headedness I mean he's been absolutely top class anytime that ball has come anywhere near him he's commanded his area on this occasion Luke 9 selling himself given Wickham again another opportunity to put the ball in the box Nathan Broadhead about to come on he's on loan from Everton he's been very useful over the course of the season but there's a mistake there by Gooch which has allowed Brandon Hanlon to career forward it's picked up by McCleary who shoots Corey Evans dives in and manages to block this it goes out over on the far side well the playoff win can spawn so much, a new dawn, a new division, new players, but defeat can spark something too. I was reading Niall Quinn this week saying that Peter Reid went round the dressing room in 1998 after your playoff final defeat and asked everybody what their plans were. What's the commitment? Are you going to stay? We've got to go back. We've got to go again. And obviously that conversation, he felt, spawned the relationship between player and manager that ended up driving you to a record points haul in the second tier that year and up into the Premier League yeah it did Sam and uh, you know there was a lot more said before we had that conversation but you could see on everybody's faces how much they wanted to be there and part of it the following season we wanted to put right what was wrong you know the disappointment was there for everybody to see but we all came back and I think the following season I think we only lost three games it was just every single game we went into we wanted to win we knew how good we were but we wanted to prove it not just to the championship but also to the Premier League where we thought we belonged and that's what this group of players have got to do look we've got two minutes left of normal time here 
and this has been such a slog over four seasons picking the right group of players that were going to get us into this position the right manager and the supporters will always be there they'll always be there and they just live for moments like this there's never a dull moment as a Sunderland supporter and this certainly has not been dull at all but when they get that chance back in the championship don't let anybody down the broadhead is on now and playing up front but it's Whippen who are coming forward with McCleary down the left side with a cross this time it's not well defended but does drop kindly for Sunderland inside the area and Patterson will take it away over on the far side at 89th minute in the game at uh, Hamden it's Rangers nil Hearts nil looks like they're going to extra time here Ross Stewart has just come over towards the near touchline after being replaced and he's taking the applause he scored the clinching goal that's what it feels like right now Alex Neal showing his appreciation he's a different character he's not the warmest of characters he puts a barrier up between him and the outside world he was told by a reporter this week that he looked calm and his response was pretty deadpan he said well what do you want me to do but he kind of talks the language that the supporters like he's got a connection with them and he will be forever in their hearts if he is the manager who replaced Lee Johnson in the winter to take them into the championship in the spring here is Brandon Hanlon down the left with now just seconds to go before the end of the 90 McCleary takes it on tries to get the better of Gooch produces a cross towards the far post I think Fenwell gets there but not enough on it to really trouble Patterson who takes it into his arms and there will be five nerve jangling gut-wrenching minutes for Mickey Gray to sit through <laughs> where's that come from uh, it's probably the foul in the far corner if I'm completely honest with you but look, there's another chance for Wickham just to put the ball in the area and I thought that was Akin Fenwell's opportunity you know he's been great since he came on you know he's, he's obviously not as agile as what he used to be when he was a young man but he's such that uh, that presence and whenever that ball comes into the area it's like the ball's like a magnet towards him and he had half a chance I think it just bounced away from him off his knee but you know, he's going out on such a high in an incredible stadium and that might have been his one chance but there is another five minutes to go balls on the halfway line five minutes of added time to be played we've played a minute of that so far Callum Doyle has released Jack Clark and Clark now moving forward through the gears brushes aside one challenge charges through the centre might get a second by the cherry hits the goalkeeper who makes a save and he just seemed to weave his way through the entirety of the Rick and Wanderers defence there shrugging off all comers and if he'd finished that, it would have been some goal. Oh, man, the movement. He's obviously got fresher legs than everybody else, but when he picked it up, I thought he was going down a blind alley. He just ran into defenders, but he got shoved in the back, which helped him, actually. And the ball bounced back to him, but what a save to keep it to two from Stockdale. 2-0 Sunderland going into the sec uh, nearly the third minute of added time at the end of the 90. Wickham coming forward here. Gareth McCleary trying to go the outside of Lyndon Gooch and uh, he manages to win that Gooch and you can hear his name ringing around Wembley Stadium and all you can see around you is just red and white striped shirts all different vintages ball's been loose on the edge of the area though Brandon Hanlon is challenged by Bart what a great, great tackle that was by Bart yeah, all those different types of red and white jerseys standing up and applauding as Stockdale comes out to meet Clark, juggles with the ball and volleys it high over the top of the defence. Hamlin trying to put pressure on Gooch, and again, Gooch does brilliantly in the right fullback area just to come and put his body in between ball and man and clear away. I've seen so many different jerseys, Sunderland jerseys, over the course of the 24 hours in London. You know, so many variations of that jersey, which is so famous because it is just red and white stripes. And as soon as you see it with the black shorts and the familiar Sunderland badge, you know that you're talking to a Mackham. In fact, everywhere, everywhere you go in London this weekend, I'm sure you'll be bumping into a Mackham. I got on a train from Manchester this morning <laughs> and there were so many of them on the train, it was ludicrous. They've all come down for a party and what a party it's going to be. Luke Hanine wins the ball high up inside Wickham Territory. Clark manages to get it through to Roberts and then back towards Broadhead who doesn't quite hold on to it this time and then it's taken by Scowan to the halfway line McCleary is beaten to it by Gooch who I think has been brilliant second half 
and it goes out of play on this near side. Pritchard's been given the man of the match award by the official sponsors. Sunderland about to go into the championship. It was their first third, uh, first experience of third tier football for 30 years and after four years they have had enough of it. Broadhead trying to scamper down the right, doesn't have the pace to get on the end of the ball which is played by Luke Nine into the right channel. Alex Nils almost on the pitch, 90 seconds of added time to go. The camera phones are ready, they're ready to celebrate amongst the uh, Sunderland support. The ball flicked away by Doyle, comes out on the edge of the area, another good tackle by Luke and I. they're giving everything to Sunderland defence, despite the fact that McCleary and his cohort are throwing everything at them. McCleary goes towards the edge of the area, blocked off by Barr, it's another Sunderland tackle, and it's cleared away. Whisper it quietly, Mickey Gray. But Sunderland are about to win two games in a row at Wembley. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Last year's EFL trophy final win over Tranmere. Maybe the hoodoo has been broken. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know where it's come from, but these players just deserve every inch of credit. They've been a credit to both clubs. Wickham have been absolutely fantastic and given absolutely everything. But there has to be one winner, Sam. Extra time in the Scottish Cup final. 0-0 between Rangers and Hearts. We're into added time here. 94 minutes and 30 seconds have been played. Simon Hooper looks at his watch. Wickham have punched above their weight under Rainsworth, but now finally maybe Sunderland are going to be punching theirs. Simon Hooper encourages the Sunderland fans and the Sunderland players to get on with the game. Sunderland Till I Die was a documentary a few weeks ago it's now the chant that the Sunderland fans sing as they celebrate a Wembley win ball tossed down the, the touchline towards Nathan Broadhead there's the full time whistle a sleeping giant awakes Sunderland's four seasons of languishing in the third tier are over and some of them can't quite believe it they have finally won a playoff final for the first time in their history. The heartache is over. The red and white stripes that have covered pretty much 70% of the seats in here are bouncing with unbridled joy. The problem is with football, it doesn't matter who you support, you just can't help falling in love with them. And Sunderland fans are in love with this moment. Yes, they should be dreaming much bigger than this, but when you've gone through a nightmare, just waking up is the first step to healing. Wickham are a smaller, less expensively assembled outfit than Sunderland, and they don't mind telling you that. And they aren't ever going to trouble the footballing purists, but they bring textures to the league, and they do a very good job in the circumstances. They are gallant losers today, but it's Sunderland's day. It's Embleton's day, it's Stewart's day. It belongs to those supporters who lit up Trafalgar Square and have serenaded Wembley. They are Sunderland till they die. And this club is very much alive. Sunderland 2, Wickham 0. Sunderland are promoted to the championship.